Okay, welcome to this week's episode of Love Subbing. And this week, we're getting ready for our spring trip. Which means we're starting our spring maintenance. And the first biggest task of that is repacking our wheel bearings. If you've not been to our website, make sure you check it out because we have a free downloadable 32 point RV spring maintenance checklist. And I'll be behind the camera for most of this. Yep, and maybe in a future episode, we'll conduct our other 32 points. So leave a comment below if you'd like to see that video. Exactly. All right, let's get into it. So the key to any maintenance program is keeping fanatical records. And so through the course of our 19 years of ownership, we've had these three log books where we keep every fuel stop, every mile to put on the trailer, everything. The last time we did a wheel bearing repack, the sub had 69,535.1 miles on it. It now has 81,986.5, and that yields about 12,433 miles in between the wheel bearing change. Now I do them every 10,000 miles, but obviously you can't, it's not like it's gonna blow up, it's not like Cinderella's ball or something where it's gonna blow up at 10,000. We were down in Florida when we hit the 10,000 point, so we had to get back up here. So uh, yeah, it's about time to do that. Okay, so we're here at the auto parts store and we're picking up our consumables for today's projects. And so we're gonna be picking up, um, we ordered some parts, so the, the, the seals, the, the bearing uh, grease seals, took a day to come in, so no big deal there. And I've also downloaded the approved lubricants from the Dexter Axle website, so we'll pick up one of those approved lubricants. And another good tip is I always keep the box from the old bearing repack. And it's super easy just to hand these guys the box, bam, they order it and you can get going. We'll also pick up the oil because we're gonna be doing truck maintenance as well. All right, well, let's go ahead and start by talking about the things that you're gonna need to get this job done in kind of order that you're gonna need them. The first of which is you're gonna to have to jack up your trailer. You can, with a dual axle, you know, use ramps and stuff, but that's always so difficult. So I always use a jack at the point that's specified in my manual on the main frame rail. And I use my Ford F-150's jack uh, for the spare tire changing thing. And that's just simply because it's always with me. I'm always gonna have it. It's not like I need to have a separate bottle jack. And the truck actually weighs more than the Airstream. So I'm pretty confident that this is... Um, and you're used to using it. And, I, and I've done it a zillion times, yeah. Between changing, repacking wheel bearings and putting on new tires in 2019, I definitely use that all the time. So you're gonna also need a wrench to take the nuts off the uh, wheels. You'll need some and we'll just kind of go this way. A torque wrench at the end to torque your nuts to the correct uh, torque. You'll need a grease gun with the grease that we bought at the store. This is the little bearing packer. A lot of people just put the bearing, you'll see me use this. A lot of people just put the bearing um, and, and pack it by hand. I use this little tool with the grease gun. I find this to be a little bit more consistent. Brake cleaner to clean everything off. I have my five little cups. You probably, if you've watched some of my other videos, know that whenever I'm doing something with the wheels and a critical nut bolt assembly, I um, keep the same nut onto the same bolt or the same stud. Lots of gloves, a little block to reseat your oil seal. You'll, new cotter pins, don't try and reuse the old cotter pins. We'll see that, but definitely use new cotter pins. So we've got those. We've got a seal puller to help pull the seal out of the back of the uh, brake drum. And we have four brand new seals, grease seals for the back of the assembly and some shop towels. So that's kind of what you're gonna need. Sounds like a good kit. Let's go ahead and take the uh, tire protectors off the tires, jack her up and get started on this task. It always feels like spring when you're taking the tire covers off. Yes, that's always a happy thought. All right, three more to go. All right, we're gonna start on the curb side. So I'm gonna take these chocks, and I'm gonna double chalk the other side just as an additional safety procedure. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do that, and then we'll loosen up the lugs. Okay. Out here and see we'll be double chalked for additional safety reasons. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and loosen the uh, lugs while it's still on the ground so that 
I don't apply a force while it's jacked up. And you notice my lug wrench has markings as to which one should go on. And we'll go ahead and do that. You do these in a certain order, correct? Yeah, well, I, it's more important when you tighten them than when you loosen them. So you're getting the jack ready. Yep, I've got a block under there for stability. See if we're spinning. We are. Excellent. Okay, now that we've jacked it up, let's go ahead and take this tire off. Um, you can see here I've got a mark at the topmost uh, stud and lug, and I am going to ensure that I put the tire back onto the same studs that it was originally on. And in the same order. Yes, and I also have these cups that we're going to put the same lug onto the same stud. For critical operations, I do this type of thing. You know, for other minor stuff, it's not that important. So, let's go ahead and, we've already pre-loosened it, of course. All right. Now this is a great time to inspect your tire for any unusual tread wear, any scoring, any flat spots. These puppies are brand new, so it should be pretty good. Looking good. So we'll set him aside. Got a piece of chalk. We're just going to mark the topmost stud here. Do better than that. Well, it's already got the mark from the last time I did the wheel bearing. Oh, okay. <laughs> And I like to put a drop cloth under, just in case I drop something. So the first thing that we're gonna do is remove the dust cap. The dust cap is that uh, aluminum cap, right? Yes. Kind of pry it open there. Take that off. And the first sign is that there's a lot of grease in there. And that's a good thing. So the next step, once you get the uh, dust cap off, is to go ahead and remove this cotter pin. So we're gonna take our needle nose. Take this little guy off. So that's gonna come out. This is gonna be thrown away. We're always gonna use new cotter pins. That one looks all bendy anyway. Yep. Next thing we're gonna do is unscrew our castle nut. That looks like that. Yep, good. And then we're gonna pull the brake drum off and there's a washer and a first bearing that we don't wanna have drop onto and pick up any dirt. Hence the dust, the drop cloth. That's just in case of an emergency, yep. Okay, so we've got... So what does that look like? Come on over here. We're gonna get some different gloves on. We're gonna take our washer out. Set that right there. Take our outer bearing out. So you're gonna actually replace the that, right? Yes. Well, I'm gonna with, clean with new ones. I'm gonna clean the bearings, and then we're going to replace the seal. So what is what is in the boxes there? What? The red box. Those are national oil seals. And I'm going to keep one of those boxes. It's, I'll show you how we get it off of here with our seal puller. I'm going to clean everything off. The 
bearings are going to get cleaned with brake cleaner. So we're going to spray some. And then this. That's the wheel bearing? Yep. There's, there's two of them per wheel, right? Yes. See the stuff I learned? And they only go in one way. And you're making sure that all the little bearings are turning, the needle bearings, and that there's no discoloration, or they didn't turn blue, which would indicate. Well, would it, could, could some of them fall out? Uh, no. I just don't know. Yep. It's moving freely though, which is good. Always have a lot of garbage. Yeah, she's looking pretty good. There's no marks, there's no scoring, there's no discoloration. And that's what the bearing looks like, kind of. And the next part will be the fun part of removing the seal from the rear bearing. Now you have to clean the washer too? I do. Okay. See, I'm getting smart with this. You are. <laughs> All right, so if you want to come over this way. And then you need a special tool for this, right? Yep, so we're going to continue cleaning all the bad grease out. You want to make sure you don't get any grease on the interior of your drum. Alright, so this guy's going to be flipped over. You're just inspecting it for anything looking weird? Yep. And what's that tool dust called? On. This is a seal puller. So I'm gonna put and this is it specifically designed just for that? Yep. That popped out not too hard. That makes things one heck of a lot easier. But these are going to be replaced as well. So you can see there's still a lot of good grease in there, which is really good. Get all that grease in there, yeah. That's your other wheel bearing, right? Yep. So this is the inner bearing. There's two bearings. And again, we're going to clean this off and inspect it for any scoring or marks. Make sure the race is free in here as well, which is looking good. Now we're going to clean the inner race of any grease. Because you want to put fresh stuff in there, right? Yep. It's really good. I'm really happy to see all that grease still in there. So repacking wheel bearings just means that you're just cleaning everything up and giving it new oil or new, new, new grease. grease. Exactly. Okay. Yep, that's all it really is. Okay. I always thought it was something that you put like in fresh ball bearings or something in there. Well, Remember? if they're damaged, you would. Now you don't have to do this for some trailers, right? Yeah, all the new ones should have never lube bearing. I think any VR. Something to check. Yep. Yes, yeah, so only if you have the older trailers do you have to do this. Your manual should let you know. Correct? Make sure that, yep. You want to make sure there's nothing in there that could score. Make sure it's super clean. No dirt. As we were fond of saying at work, lube it or lose it. How's the inside of the hub looking? It's looking good. You're looking for the race? It's all looking good? All right, now it's time to pack those bearings. Okay, now we're going to actually pack the bearing itself. And some people put a glob of grease in their hand and kind of pack it that way. That's kind of the old core way. I have this little uh, wheel bearing packing tool, which Where, I think is pretty can cool. Can you get one of those? Napa. Any auto supply store is going to have them. So it's like two little funnels, right? Yep. Screw that guy down. Trying to get it as even as possible. All right, we'll screw him down. It has to be really tight. Yep. And what we're going to do is put clean ourselves off here. You need a lot of shop towels when you do this job. I'm going to use our Zerk fitting here on our grease gun. Put this little guy on here. And then we're just going to add grease right up until the point that you see all the dirty grease come out and the clean grease oozing in. 
my shadows casting. Hard to get that thing off, huh? And you can kind of see in there how that looks. That's when it looks really good, huh? Yeah. Let me see. Look, lower down this way so the sun can catch it. Yep. Cool. And I'll usually finish with the palm method. Messy job. It is. So what are you doing now? I'll put a little bit of grease on the race there. What is the race? The inside of that the thing? The inside. All right, the next step is we're going to put in our new seal. We're going to first make sure our block doesn't have any residual grease, splinters, or dust, or anything like that. Take this guy. That's what that seal looks like. It's just like the old one. Yep. Except new. Just lay it on top of that one, right? Yep. Very well done. All right, so now we're going to pack the outer bearing, clean off the spindle. What's the spindle? The axle. Oh, okay. We're going to clean this guy off, all that old grease, and we're going to inspect them as well, make sure there's no scoring, discoloration. We're also gonna look at our brake pads. All right, we're gonna use them our vernier calipers to measure the thickness of the brake pad. It's not a multimeter, right? No. <laughs> What's that doing? It's uh, yep, we're good there. So what what are you measuring for? We got about an eighth of an inch thickness, and the Airstream manual says they need to be replaced at a sixteenth of an inch. Oh, okay, so that just you're just measuring the thickness of them, right? Of the pad, yeah. Yep. And just do a quick inspection, making sure everything's looking pretty good. So now is reassembly, right? Yep. Set that down right there. A little bit more grease on the. Get everything lined up. it up with the chalk mark at the top. Yep. Okay. Then the outer bearing goes in. Yeah, that looks as greasy as the other one did. All right, now that we get the drum on, we're gonna put the front bearing in. We'll put our washer on. And then we're gonna install the castle nut. And how much do you tighten the... Yep, so this is, a ver this is a very important part. What you want to do is tighten the castle nut. This is not a regular nut that you want to reef down on, but you want to just get enough a little pressure and then back it off a little bit. So we're going to feed in our 
cotter pin. Might have to adjust the castle nut just a little bit. Is there a special hole that you put it in or just? There's only one hole. Okay. So the cotter pin goes in. Take your needle nose. Bend that over. So you're basically bending the uh, ends towards the center. Yep. Then we'll go ahead and take the final step. We'll be to take our dust cap. Tapping lightly with a hammer. Yep. Okay. Now it's time to put the wheel back on. Just do a final little clean here. Put the wheel back on, orienting it correctly. As per your pencil mark, correct? Yep. See how good your assistant was? My assistant is great. So we're just gonna hand tighten these. Now, is there some procedure once you leave and you go down the road a little while? Yep, within 30 to 50 miles, you need to retorque your wheels, your lug nuts. And this is with your big torque wrench, right? And we're gonna do that right now. As soon as we lower it, because you don't wanna be torquing it while it's up in the air. So you're only just lightly putting those on? Yep. And that's why I'm not doing the star pattern right now, because they're just going on. When I go to torque them, I will. I just want everything seated well when it goes down. So you're just tightening just, just to resistance? Yep. All right. All right, Jack is out. All right, we are going to go ahead and set our torque wrench to 85. 85 what? Foot pounds. And we're gonna go ahead and do the star pattern now. That's tight. That's how Love Subbing repacks our wheel bearings. As I always say, I never say in my how-to videos what you should do. I just tell you the way I do it. And right. if you want to learn something, fine. If you think I'm doing something wrong, hey, that's fine. Do it your way. Um, we're just here to show you how we do things. Excellent. You're so good. if you like this video, give us a big thumbs up. And if you think we've earned a subscription, click to subscribe. And comment below if you have a method of repacking your wheel bearings that you'd like to share. Because we come out with RV and Airstream related videos just like this one every Tuesday. Thanks for watching.